Hey, all you holistic hipsters out there, it's that time. So grab your chalice of choice and sit back and sip along with us. We would love to welcome you to the Tea Podcast, where we spill the tea on all things holistic in the pet grooming industry. Let me introduce you to our hostesses with the mostesses. She is the socialite of skin and coat care, Ms. Michelle Knowles. And the queen bee of all things oily, Ms. Melissa conti Diener. Brought to you by TheOilyGroomer.com Are you searching for a new and more mindful way of grooming? Interested in understanding how to grow your grooming business with a more holistic and organic approach? Please contact Melissa Conti Diener at TheOilyGroomer.com so that you can set up a meeting and bring balance and prosperity to your life. And AllThingsPaw.com Intermediate and advanced courses in pet esthetician work, fear recovery, animal handling, and more. Get your learn on with all things paw. And by PositiveEd.com. Attend from anywhere in the world. Always pay the lowest price. Six to ten hours of innovative content and more. Education for every learning lifestyle. Never miss the class you need and transcripts are provided for recordings. Say hello to Pet Professional Education Unleashed with PositiveEd.com. Now, let's get this tea party started. Woo! All right. What do you say, Melissa? Should we be getting this tea party started? I'm always ready for a tea party. <laughs> I am the official Mad Hatter of this tea party. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll just be the dormouse. <laughs> you are many things, but a dormouse is not one of them, dear heart. <laughs> Ooh, what do you have uh, in sorry. your cup today, ma'am? My, what's in my cup today? Sorry, I'm distracted by Noni has a new, my dogs have new squeaky toys. So that, that, that will be our musical accompaniment <laughs> through this. Yeah. They're going to squeak when we're talking about something very important. Very important, (laughs) I'm sure. This is my cup today. It actually was a, I love this. It was actually a gift. Oh, that's gorgeous. So it's got all these drawings etched into into the cup. And it is a, um, again, a cool tea for me because it is a balmy 115 degrees here today. Mm -hmm. On the sun. Yeah, so it is, uh, I just can't do a hot tea. I just cannot. So this is a lovely pick-me-up of uh, some black Earl Grey with a a mix of peppermint in there as well. Oh, I love that. So a little caffeine, not too much because uh, mama can't do too much caffeine or you'll be peeling me off the ceiling. So Yeah, yeah. And I'll just die of a heart attack on the spot. Yeah, you are. (laughs) Well, so no caffeine for you. I'm already annoying. Give me caffeine and I'm extra annoying. So. And I'll just die of, of yeah. hypertension. <laughs> so what's in your cup, Michelle? So I just have a my boring Aster false graph today. Uh, and today I'm doing hypertension herbs. <laughs> this particular mix has ashwagandha, barberry, uh, American ginseng and hawthorn. Oh, nice. Delicious. A little ashwagandha. It always reminds me of like a magical thing. It is. Ashwagandha. Very... Yeah. <laughs> it should be like abracadabra. Ashwagandha. Yeah. Ashwagandha. <laughs> <It's good>. <laughs> <laughs> we should write a book or make a movie with just yeah. all herbal, herbal stuff because herbal. technically that's what they are. They are. <laughs> they don't call it spelling for nothing. Exactly. So that so is. You might be wondering what our topic is. Yes. And it has nothing to do with any of this. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Talking to dogs and to each other. Which we are doing right yes. now. Talking yes. to each other. And to dogs, obviously. Yes. At all I'm times. always talking to dogs. Yeah. Juju's joining us for this show, but she's yeah. being shy. 
Yes, poor things. A little jujube. So um, we just wanted to talk today about the language of dogs and um, how we can use the language of dogs to help our grooms be better, help our relationships with our dogs be better, and believe it or not, make our relationships with each other better by oh, learning how to talk nice. to dog. Yeah. Uh, so how did you learn how to talk to dogs? Um, I think, uh, honestly, I came by it in the sense that a lot of us as groomers that become holistic groomers, trial and error, mm -hmm. you know, you, you start to slow down and actually try to figure out what they're trying to tell you non audibly, you know, non verbally mm -hmm. and looking for things like body language and cues. Um, and, um, and I think the key is, uh, is to really truly slow down and pay attention to the animal the sentient being that is in front of you instead of just looking at them as a pile of fur to sculpt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's super important. How about you? How did you learn to uh, communicate with your um, friends? In a really weird roundabout way. Um, oh, tell, do tell, do tell. <laughs> <laughs> I hung around with a lot of bikers and I. I love it. This, Michelle's I, stories always start out with such <laughs> awesomeness. Like I hung out with bikers. Me, I was at a convent or I was at Catholic school. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I hung around a lot of bikers and um, I especially hung around with a lot of male bikers and learned the culture of them. And when I started grooming, um, I kind of found the parallels between talking with dogs and talking uh, to those rough and ready people, you know, uh, in a way uh, they really did help me. And they especially helped me learn how to work with um, aggressive or fear fearful dogs. And I think that's, that is the foundation of why I feel like I'm, I'm successful in working with those types of animals. Uh, everything I learned about aggression, I, I learned from those biker people. Um, and they were wonderful, and it was a great time in my life, but um, it was very taxing and very full of anxiety. But um, I learned about nonverbal like cues. like my childhood. Right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I learned about nonverbal cues and the yeah. way to hold your body to... Um, to say something rather than speaking. I learned about tone, uh, the way you talk, uh, the tone that you say your words in, uh, coupled with body language can mean so many, very many different things. And I think that a lot of people who come up, um, they would be considered sleepy uh, in from that crowd. Uh, the outsider looks sleepy. They're not paying attention to their environment. They're not aware of what's going on around them. Therefore, they're not even aware of how they're conveying information with their own body. So I think that that is uh, probably where it stemmed from. And I began to talk to dogs very easily. Uh, they're, all you have to do is observe them and be quiet yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you see them change their mind or their movement, depending on what you do, you, you are having a conversation with them. They don't normally talk to each other with sounds like they will make sounds. Uh, and they do have some barks and some whines that mean something to them. But for the most part, it's all eyes, energy and body language, uh, which I thought was very interesting. So as I studied that and became better and better at a groomer, I started doing, um, behavior recovery. And that really does get down to having to learn the language of the dog that you're working with, because believe it or not, dog body language is pretty similar, but depending on what environment they come from, it means something different. Uh, just like people from different lands have different languages. Dogs right. from different places have different languages. And sometimes it takes a minute for that dog to learn the language of the pack that they're in. Uh, and that's why you see a rescue come in and they, they're learning. I think one of the most interesting things I have ever seen uh, that is just emblazoned in my mind when I brought home uh, my Gemma, uh, she was nine, she's got seizures. She's, she came from a hoarding situation with about 19 other dogs that lived in a single wide trailer. And her whole life was getting as much food as she could from the communal bowl and establishing her territory under the blanket on the couch seeing her navigate 
my well-educated uh, language dogs, uh, seeing her navigate them and trying to mimic them and copy them and find out what the rules of the house were was one of the most interesting things I have ever seen in my life. Her little brain learning that new language was amazing. Uh, and now she knows, so they're all just a pack. If you bring a new dog into the pack, watch how they try to navigate. And you will learn so much about how they have to move in their world and how much energy uh, they use to actually communicate. So that's where uh, I kind of came from. Well, you also worked with Heather Beck. I didn't work with Heather Beck until much later in my no, career. But, I'm, I'm, but overall, you actually became really... Um, we're very good friends. We're good yeah. friends. We're um, but you became very colleagues. well educated in that fear recovery mm -hmm. from her canine lifeline. I, I mean, well, if you follow I if you follow her career and who she is and what what she does, absolutely. Which is shout, shout out to Heather Beck at Canine yeah. Lifeline. Uh, she's out of Utah, but she goes all over the world and trains dogs. And she calls it Canine Lifeline because literally sometimes she is the last uh, the last chance that a dog will get before being euthanized um, because she deals with a lot of dogs who have bite records on people, other dogs. Uh, and she gets them to a point where they don't have need a muzzle and they walk around with other dogs in a huge social of like 45 to a hundred dogs. Uh, I've seen it. I've oh, participated. Like <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, she is, she is so fabulous. And um, she we're, has provided me with the opportunity away from where yeah. Gemma came from. <laughs> 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 but she has afforded me the opportunity to speak at IACP this year, uh, September uh, 25th through 28th. Yeah, that's so awesome. Congratulations on yeah. that, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, so that's the first time that I'll be speaking uh, my spiel in front of uh, a group of dog trainers from around the world. So right. that's going to be really fun and interesting. Meet a whole new line of people in the industry that I, that I don't know, and it's going to be a great time. So, uh, yeah, I just... Uh, I wanted to talk about talking to dogs because I, I feel like even though we feel like we do talk to our dogs and we say funny things to them and we put clothes on them and do all kinds of weird things to them, um, I, I don't think a, a, a good majority of us know what speaking the language of a dog really means. Um, there are all kinds of ways to talk to dogs and there's all kinds of ways to ignore them as well. Um, I saw a show and the show doesn't matter, but within the show, she got a dog. Uh, it was a reality TV show. She got a dog and she says, yes, my dog is a downstairs only dog. And then she has this elaborate kennel that she keeps it in. Uh, and she doesn't ever allow it to go upstairs. And I thought to myself, that seems really crazy to me. Now, I know like people live like that and I'm not dogging them for their lifestyle or, or anything like that. But it just it was so foreign to me to not to see a dog that is not allowed to have the whole run of the house that is not allowed. And I'm sure a lot of households are that some dogs are very destructive. I've got three little carpet munchers that uh, they can destroy whatever they want on their level. And if it, I leave something on the floor, it's my fault. Um, but there are other ways of living with dogs. I know dogs that are security dogs live in an outdoor kennel sometimes and don't even come in the house. Um, but I think to have the most enriching experience with your personal dog is to live your whole life with them. My dogs sleep in my bed with me. They have special custom stairs. They go up and down on my bed because my bed's super high. Uh, they go everywhere with me. We have garden time, snuffle time. Um, if they want to sit next to me on the couch, they're allowed to uh, because it's their house too. And I was even like that when we had big dogs as well. But the big dogs were very trained the, where the smaller dogs are not because big dogs are a lot more dangerous and destructive uh, than my littles. But I just, um, I think it's interesting all the ways that people try to communicate with their dogs, like the buttons they have out now uh, that you, oh, can buy, those, you can buy I a row of those. buttons. And I know there's a lot of people who have been training their dogs to literally speak English to them rather than having the dog. And I got the impression that, this is just my impression. I'm just one person. Uh, I'm literally a, one person in a sea of what, 334 million people in this country alone. I just feel like those buttons are showing your dog how stupid you are. <laughs> I, I 
love them because I feel like, look how quickly they can assimilate to us. And yet we still cannot understand them. Yeah. That we, you know, they can learn our actual language. And I yeah. love those videos. I watch them on TikTok and, and you know, Instagram real and, and Facebook reels. And, and some of them, you know, they'll be like, um, uh, uh, I watch, of course, the Shih Tzu ones I love. And there's one that I follow called Miso. And mm -hmm. she's all, Miso want food. And she'll be like, oh, Miso, you already ate your food. And Miso's all, bitch. And hits the, <laughs> hits she has a button, button for bitch. <laughs> yep, hits the button for bitch. And I'm thinking to myself, that dog, they are so intelligent that they have, they have fooled us into thinking they are stupid creatures. No, they haven't. We have fooled ourselves into no, thinking you're yeah, stupid creatures. That, yeah, that we Yeah, I because mean, literally, I, you'd know exactly what your dog is talking about. And anybody with any long-lived uh, ownership of dogs knows they you can have an entire conversation and not make a sound. Yep. An entire conversation about their day, about what they did, about what they want right now, about when it's nap time, about, hey, I'm curious about what you're doing now, mom. All the things. They already have a complex, beautiful language that's very understandable. Uh, now, on the other hand, and I play devil advocate, devil's advocate to myself all the time. On the other hand, what a great way to spend time with your dog. Any time that you can enrich them and, oh, yeah. and bond with them. So, I mean, in that respect, I love the buttons. But in the other respect, it makes me sad that that dog is just not being listened to. Oh, I have to make a button because I'm too dumb to watch what you're doing to know what you're talking about. But again, I war with myself all the time. Right. How awesome is it? Um, a lot of people uh, watch these and say, oh, that's cute. I'm going to do that. And then the mm -hmm. dog is like, oh, okay. Instead of me just looking at her and then looking at the door, because that means I have to go out. Right. Now I've got to go through this rigmarole. I already know what the out means in your language. I just can't say it with my dog mouth. Now I have to go over to my buttons, find the button outside, outside, outside. And they're like, oh, you're so smart outside. You're like, no, I already told you in dog language. Like a hundred times I had to go out. Right. Now you have to use your stupid button. You know? <laughs> stupid, stupid human. Exactly. But Anyhow, I do. I do. I those do are my to, impressions. <laughs> I do have to interject that there are tons of videos of people teaching their dogs to do this. There mm -hmm. are no videos of people teaching cats to do this. There is. There are though. Are there really? Yes. They're, they're the, actually, the best. Let me tell you about it. I don't oh know the names. I have not seen. Yes, those. but I did come across one who had let their cat no, uh, no. or or trained their cat to do this too, and. This is the beauty of cats versus dogs. She's like, she wants to train the cat to do this. So he's got a few buttons on the floor. And he was like, uh, he was asking for a treat or something like that. She's like, no, it's not time for a treat like that. And the cat walked around and found the button and literally sat on this button for five full minutes looking at his owner going <laughs> stupid, 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 <laughs> stupid, 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 because that's how he felt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was going to let her know. Stupid, 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 stupid. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't need a button. Right. I don't want to teach my dog to press a button called stupid because yeah, it would we, wear yeah. out. No, I don't want the stupid button. No. Juju is being clingy because I had to. I had to. Dad's away. And it's yeah. just uh, me with the kids here, the fur kids here. And mm -hmm. oh my God, Noni is just going to drive me crazy today with that squeaky toy. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm shooting myself for in the foot for pushing the button on Chewy.com and ordering those toys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's enjoying it though. Um, but she's being very clingy and very lovey-dovey because uh, dad's gone and my husband works from home. So there's usually always someone here and I had mm -hmm. to go, I had to go out and get my blood work done and run a couple errands this morning. And I don't know what, what's your feeling on time concepts with dogs? I don't think that they understand, like they, they miss you, but. Um, no, like, they absolutely tell time by the degradation of smell. Yes. Uh, so, so that's how they do tell time. And of course, light. Uh, they, yeah, they do sense the light and they, the degradation of your smell. So if you're there at home, you are producing a scent, which you've rubbed right. on every part of your home. It's it's in your house. However, when you're there, 
uh, alive with them in the room, you have a certain concentration of odor. When you leave in the morning, it degrades. And if they get used to the amount of time that you're gone, let's say you have a nine to five or right. you come home at noon every day or whatever, they can track the degradation of smell to that point and know at that point it's time for you to come home. So that's so that's the, when they start looking for you. Like yes. your dog will go to the window to look out. Mine mm -hmm. know that I usually come home around 5 30, 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. In that time frame of that area, my husband always says that they go and they will sit by some of them, not all of them, but some of them will go and sit by the garage door, mm -hmm. like the door that leads out to the garage and right. wait for me to, to get there. Um, so um, I, they know when it's time to eat. Like my husband feeds the dogs in the morning. I, I mean, we have a pack of 11. So it's a, definitely a, a zoo. Most of them are Shih Tzus, but we do have a couple of, of other breeds here. And uh, now that John was gone and I, the first morning I woke up and everybody was very confused. Mm -hmm. They were like, is she going to feed us? Mm -hmm. Do we, you know, does she even know what to do? Yeah, yeah. Right. Does she know <laughs> the things to do to, to give us our food? And everybody just kept like watching me and then they would go into the 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 uh kennel room and they would be like looking and then looking at where the where um i keep all the where we keep all the bowls and all that mm -hmm. stuff and i went in there and i like changed the mop bucket and did some other things like john gets up and the first thing he does as soon as he's out of bed is gets their breakfast going get everybody going mm -hmm. and i usually am getting ready to leave for work um, mm -hmm. since he works from home and he doesn't start until later in the day, he takes care of that. So they were completely confused. And I could see that in their body language, in the way that they were reacting and even looking at one another, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like they were actually interacting with one another. Mm -hmm. They're like, this um, is different. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. Stupid yeah. human feed us already. Um, and I still did it wrong. I talked to my husband, he's on his way home. And I said, I screwed it up two days. I only had to do it two days. I forgot vitamins. I forgot to do this. And they, he has a whole regimen. I mm -hmm. said, I can't remember their fruits and veggies because they get a rotational diet. Mm -hmm. and like, but, and they know, like, they know, like they looked at the bowl and they were like, mm, sorry, this is not everything, mom. Oh my gosh. My heart dog Tonk. Uh, I accidentally, accidentally, uh, like three Cheerios. And this is, she's no longer with us. It's been years and years and years decades um but she came out for breakfast one time and i was getting everything ready and i was getting ready, kids ready for school and they just so happened to be having cheerios in the morning and i dropped three uh onto the counter as i was pouring so i just took them and put them on top of food and, and fed her from that moment on and i'm talking from that food dish on she would not touch that bowl until those three things either cheerios or cornflakes it had to be three I tried one. I tried two. Uh -uh, she could count <laughs> three. Whatever it was had to be on top of her food before she would eat it. She'd be like, "Thank you. Complete yep. my meal, please." Now it is where's, complete. <laughs> where's my Where's my parsley? Um, excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> so yes, they do. They have an expectation of yeah. service. <laughs> I, I think so. I think they do. I think that even the dogs that you groom, like mm -hmm. I. I groom here at home. I groom on the weekends. I primarily groom Shih Tzus, um, but I do have a couple other breeds that come to see me. Um, they get to know the routine. They know uh, how I groom and what, like when I get the comb out or I get this out or whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. they're very like, they're very aware of everything. And so if I'm going to, they see the nail clipper, some of them are like good about it and just mm -hmm. pick up their feet, whatever. Some of them already have started to tuck their toes in and they know what's coming. So mm -hmm. they're, I think that they're hyper aware of their environment. Absolutely. More and so than we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> much and more. very much about the routine or regimen. Like they, and I think that they enjoy a routine. It, it gives them you know, that's, a feeling of stability. Yeah. That's a really good point to bring up. And that's why we harp over and over and over again. When you're grooming, you should have a routine that you do every single yes. time. Because your clients, your dog clients have to have that routine to feel safe. 
if they understand what's coming next and it's in their brain, the pattern is in their brain, then everything is going to go a little bit more smoothly. If they don't know what to expect, you're going to throw them right back into fearfulness, anxiety, right. and they're going to be non-cooperative because they are afraid. So the more you can develop a routine and stick to it, and try not to have a conversation when you're grooming a dog unless it's necessary for the function of the room. Uh, because you have to understand, look at your, think of your face and think of you wearing a cone and Elizabethan collar. When you're grooming, that cone is totally on them. Your, your energy cone is yeah. totally on them and you're communicating with them and you have a level of concentration to make the connection with that dog. The minute you turn away, even if your hand is on a back leg, so the dog doesn't leap off the table and you turn away and you're talking to somebody, Oh my God, I know I saw that last Friday and blah, 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 blah. Da, da, da. You have interrupted the circuit of that energy and you basically almost have to restart the dog all over again because the dog's unsettled. So the most important thing that you can do, uh, the, mo the most beautiful thing you can do for your clients is to find that routine and then stick to it and try to rule out any interruptions. I agree 100%. When I work with the students at the school, that is I usually lesson number one when they first start at the academy is I explain to them that it's like a plug and a socket. Mm -hmm. And so you are going to plug into that animal and at times throughout the hour and a half, two hours, whatever it is, because we work one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, within that time frame, you may be, become the socket, they may become the plug. And mm -hmm. you're going to have this synergistic kind of going back and forth of that energy exchange. Mm -hmm. And you do not have to be audibly speaking to them. Although a lot of times I will say, especially if I'm working with a fearful dog mm -hmm. um, and they haven't been exposed to grooming, this is the nail clipper. Do you want to smell it? Mm -hmm. Take a look. This is what it is. See, I put it up against them. No, it doesn't hurt you. You know, that kind of stuff. Sometimes just the soothing tone of your voice can help calm mm -hmm. their nerves as well. But um, it's, it's about keeping that connection. As soon as I'm trying to do that, my phone rings mm -hmm. um, or, uh, you know, my other dogs, my personal dogs start to bark or any of that, it cuts that connection. Like you said, I tell the students, try not to be having a conversation with somebody else. I hate, we always close the door to the classroom. It drives me insane when it's nice and quiet everyone's working everything is going smoothly somebody inevitably will bust in and be like oh, hey, hey can yeah. somebody yeah hey can somebody <laughs> hold this dog for a nail trim or hey what are you guys doing in here or but mm -hmm. and it's like and it is a complete you may as well just you know uh, have a complete earthquake go off yeah just throw a bomb in the room <laughs> yeah, you know because everybody including the groomers are like oh you know it just it, oh yeah it completely cuts through and breaks that energetic connection mm hmm yeah, um, I've had uh, I haven't had it done, but they have been fired before uh, by walking through the grooming room and causing an accident. When I worked at uh, one hospital, um, she was told not to go through there. And it was uh, we were new in the space. So everybody was used to using it as a shortcut. And uh, it, we she'd been told a million times, you know, we cannot use that as a shortcut. It's not a shortcut. She's like, oh, I'm just walking through real quick like that. And uh, one of our groomers uh, didn't Nick like cut chomp down on a great Dane's tongue oh. and it had to be surgically closed. And she was fired because that's why you don't do that. You don't yep. bust in on a room. You cannot do that. Everybody's concentrating the dogs included, you know, but I love what you said about letting them smell. Everything you touch the dog with should be able to be smelled, licked, yeah. uh, explored, snuffled. Uh, yeah. That's how they are all right with their environment. So let them touch and, and see everything. If it's scissors, make sure you're holding the scissors closed, but let them snuffle all over it. Sometimes yeah. they want to lick it uh, to get the scent. Um, but yeah, let them do that. And it will be less scary than you just putting a weird object on them that they haven't explored. On top of, I know that because I, I also breed and I, so I have puppies on occasion. Um, when I do puppy enrichment and my puppies are 
handled from birth. Uh, and then they're usually their very first actual grooming is uh, at maybe three weeks. My Shih Tzus tend to be small, so I um, I want to make sure that they're healthy enough to hand be able to, to handle um, being bathed and dried and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but the same kind of thing. As soon as their eyes and their ears are open, that's when I start to expose them to those kind of things. Mm -hmm. But it's I, I call it enrichment because it's opening up their it's enriching their world yes. when their puppies understand that they are born blind and deaf. And the only sense that they have that is currently driving them is their sense of smell. That's how they find their mother. That's how they can suckle right after being born. Mm -hmm. um, and so it is this, their sense of smell is so integral to their world mm -hmm. that even as they age and they get older, that is still their main main way of um, exploring their world. Their way, yeah, yeah. And finding mm -hmm. their way throughout the world. That's why a dog can go blind and usually can doesn't really have much of a problem it unless you have a great life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's not a big deal, but uh, if you took away that sense of smell, I think mm -hmm. the dog would be completely confused. I think, they, I think they'd be depressed. Yeah. You know, I think that would be a huge blow uh, to a dog not to be able to snuffle. That's yeah. so much and, a part of them. And your dogs do that to you as well. Mm -hmm. I, I have client dogs that do it to me that snuffle you that want to, you know, sniff me as soon as I get home from work, my, my Cocker Spaniel, who's now long gone, one of my heart dogs, Marigold, we used to call her the inspector general because I would come <laughs> home from work from my shop. And as soon as I would walk in the house, I, she literally would stand up on her back legs and put her front feet out and put them on my thighs and hold me like, stay right here. I have to inspect you. Exactly. <laughs> you have to be inspected before you can enter into this house. Mm -hmm. And it used to crack me up. You know, the other dogs would sniff my shoes or sniff whatever and be like, whatever. But Mary would want to just as much as she could stretch her body out to sniff my smock, you know, everything. She had to get the whole gamut of who I was associating with. You know, once and I, I think it's home. interesting too, because you have such a large pack there. You have a bunch of Shih Tzus who are bred just to be little, little rug runners, yeah. you know, and then you have a Cocker Spaniel who yes. still has instinctual things in their brain to be a hunting dog. So yes. the sense of smell and knowing all her different scents that are coming in uh, became very important to her. I think that's a really interesting observation. Yeah. They, I, I, I personally love the fact that dogs, most dogs, even mixed breed dogs are hardwired for certain behaviors. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and I love to figure out those behaviors. I love mm -hmm. to see them do what I always say. I believe everything has a purpose. And I love to see them do what they were purposely created for, even if it's a mixed breed, you know, and they're displaying different um, uh, uh, personality traits of the breeds that they're mixed with. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it always just gives them that individuality because I, I believe that they have personalities. I believe that they are individual. I'm holding Juju right now. She's a Shih Tzu, but her personality is very different than some of the other Shih Tzus that I have here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of them could care less that I was gone. Most, you know, most of the morning they were like, Oh mm, yeah, she's back. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting for dad to come home now. You know, some of them are, are definitely, uh, uh, John's they, dogs. They play, yeah, they play favorites, you know? Yeah. So, um, but, uh, I love to see that. And especially with puppies, that's why I, I hold, I, I make it a point to hold on to puppies until they're at a minimum 12 weeks old. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes 16 weeks before they can leave me. I want to see that personality come out. I want to see them start to come into their own and start to be like actually be a dog, you know? And, and I think that helps their, uh, 
their mental health as well, because they should stay with their mom a little bit longer than oh, we're absolutely. used to giving them away. I know people who will take puppies at six weeks, six snatch weeks, them out yeah, and just, so. they need their mama just a yeah. little bit longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, because I have a pack, it's important for them to get socialized. Mm -hmm. And so the puppies are allowed to be around everybody else and be out in what we call gen pop. You know, general where, population for yeah, those who yeah, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they, they're allowed out of the puppy area because we have separate areas. So um, because puppies generally don't know the rules and mm. how to be. They know nothing. No. And, <laughs> and it's hysterical to watch when, mm. you know, you're, you're trying to let them out and you have six Shih Tzu puppies who want to run around like little crazy maniacs and they always 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 have to go up to the oldest cantankerous absolutely old dog i have you know why are you so mad why are you so mad <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, bless her heart my old cocker you know foxy brown she will just kind of like push him away with her nose or swat at them and mm. try to find take the higher ground get away from them or whatever but if they continuously bother her, she will not hurt them, but mm -hmm. she will audibly, correct them. Mm -hmm. yeah, audibly let them know and correct them. She may grab them and hold them down, um, but that's part of them learning to be a dog mm -hmm. and Absolutely. not be some little wild maniac running around like, I can do whatever I want, you know? I've seen a few videos now of... Uh people actually filming when the mama dog corrects the the puppies and yeah. one of them was so cute it was here recently it was a uh a white pit bull or uh, i don't remember but anyway the baby was just having at the mama just yep. having at her and she was like oh oh no you did not and she was like whoa and just kind of bumped him with her head yeah he straightened up and she's like mm -mm, you ain't talk to me like that you're a baby <laughs> Yeah, I've seen them just thump them, you know, like take yeah, their put foot, their paw, yeah, just like bump them right on the head or hold them down. Uh -huh. you know, it's equivalent them to them being like, Mom, 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 exactly. Mom. You're, you're you're like, like, death. Yeah, and then she's just had it. She's like, All right, because I've seen them hanging from her ears, yeah, and yeah, jumping and pulling, you know, and then finally she's just like. Phew. Or she'll mm. just go after them, makes a whole lot of noise, scares the crap out of them. They usually scream and cry, but she's mm. not hurting them. Mm -mm. But they I have think to the best one that I've ever seen, uh, not just about discipline, but talking about their have their personalities come out. I was watching a litter. Uh, it was a video, a litter of um, pointer puppies. And I'll be darned if those little suckers, cute as a button, will start pointing when they're teeny yeah. tiny. And I I die yep, inside. I'm just like, that is like, so cute. I have to kill myself now. Yeah. <laughs> I love when they do the things that they're so sweet. born to do. You know? Yeah. Um, and that's why I, I make it a big deal when I do enrichment and I bring things in like boxes and mm -hmm. uh, pots and pans. And well, when they're born, I have, um, I used to play a CD. Now I don't have to. Now I can just turn the, because the, this is my wonderful, beautiful office also doubles as my whelping room where mm -hmm. I sleep with them until yeah. they are old enough that I feel like they're secure and okay. And I can go back to my regular bedroom, but mm -hmm. I sleep in the same room with them. And, uh, and I will put it on the computer and it's just sirens. It is people talking. It mm -hmm. is, uh, like a noisy kitchen. And oh, I yeah, just, that's a great all, idea. All it's like when they tell you to run the vacuum under your baby's crib yes. when they're sleeping. You <laughs> just get them used to the noises. <laughs> yep. Get them used to all sorts of noises. As soon as they're born, I do the Q-tip after um, they're born. I take a Q-tip and put it all in the webbing of their pads of their feet. Mm -hmm. And then as they get a little bit bigger, their eyes and ears still aren't open. But I'll turn my bravora on, my little trimmer, and I'll mm -hmm. just lay it in there mm -hmm. on and let them feel the vibration of it and... So then when I go to actually groom them, it's not so far in. Mm -hmm. It's not so scary. Um, I wish more more breeders would take those things into account mm -hmm. um, so that grooming doesn't have to be so hard. Yeah. 
because we really truly are asking them. We are talking to them and we are asking them to do things that are unnatural to them. Oh, amen for that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. We uh, and grooming them, grooming itself is a foreign entity to, yeah. to dogs. Uh, they don't understand no. any of that. Uh, some of them are willing to go with and, and, and let it happen because they're happy dogs or whatever. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's a very unusual for a dog to pick up another dog's paw. Right. You know, or to, you know what I mean? That's just, it's quite unusual. Yeah. We ask them to do things that just come unnaturally to them to stand in one spot for a long time mm -hmm. uh, while we yeah. manipulate all the, you know, exactly. fur and, and touch areas that are very vulnerable, especially mm -hmm. certain breeds like your terriers. They hate their face and feet touch because they're bred to protect them. They're bred to be mm -hmm. down in holes fighting mm -hmm. badgers and vermin. Mm -hmm. So they have these things coming at them constantly and to, they have to dig with those feet. So now here we are and we're like, hold your face still and let me get all up in your face. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're working with them, you need to understand their language as much as you need them to understand yours. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it so, should be. Well, I don't, I don't think I'll get the buttons anytime soon. Uh, oh, because I, I would. I, I, I love dog. I love dog language. And I, I yeah. love, I love making it, uh, because I want to be an expert at dog language, uh, eventually. Um, I we're all working on it. It's a work in progress. Uh, I've gone so far as to get puzzles. Uh, I have several puzzles that my dogs work except bunny bunny is hard R retarded. And I am not even joking with you. She's just as pleasant and sweet as the day is long. She's the little critter that's in my, my, uh, my bio, uh, picture my bio picture yeah. yeah she just looks like a little critter and she's just the sweetest nicest most gentle dog i have ever met in my life you could not pour her on somebody even when she barks it's soft it's like rah, rah. <laughs> it's just so sweet yeah she's dumb dumb, she's she's, dumb. She's dumb. <laughs> if i if i put her food in a puzzle she, she'd starve to death she'd starve to death she's she, like, <laughs> I can't, I know. I she doesn't have the capacity. Yeah. She does not. She does not. <laughs> and now she's older and losing her hearing and losing her sight. Oh. And bless her heart. You just have to, you just have to let her be who she is. Because that's, that's all she is. I put her uh, little piece of fish in my hand. And she was expecting it to be on the ends of my fingers. And so she was trying to lick and smell on my fingers. But the food was right there. And, and I had to literally move her head so <laughs> her whiskers touched it. She's like, oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> She's just, wow. <laughs> My husband always says, sweet goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, it does. That is, that is a good one. But I think that if the more you learn how to speak with dogs, it becomes second nature to you. And you literally start talking to other people like that, which is the last half of our, our topic. Speaking to each other, um, sometimes body language, uh, if, you, if you treat, uh, uh, if you love dogs and you're a groomer and you really love dogs, I really love dogs. I really, really love them. Uh, you'll find that others will respond to dog language. If you move your body in a certain way, you know, if you look at them a certain way, uh, start practicing on people that you trust and love, like your family, go home and stare at them for just that moment too long. And they'll be like, what? Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> or give them some side eye, you know, and they're like, oh, what's going on? Do I have something on my, on my face or whatever? <laughs> you will start understanding dogs more when you start using their language for people. And I think that's one of the, another big, huge moment, a big aha moment in my life. Uh, when I started just, I treat other people like I treat dogs, which is very well. Um, and I speak to them like that as well, because I, I am not the most eloquent person in, uh, in the wild without practice. Um, I am socially awkward at the best of times. Um, if you think that I'm not, it's because I have practiced and practiced and practiced a public persona uh, so that you, so that I can, interact with actual people, um, but I'm not really good at it uh, foundationally. <laughs> Let's and, just put it that and, way. And, and I have to say, and she really dreads it. 
Mm-hmm. For as much as for as much as you are out there and you are a public speaker, mm-hmm. um, we were at lunch a couple of weeks ago, and this lovely woman just came up to our table, and I could just feel from Michelle like, "Oh, please don't come over and talk to us." Please oh, don't. but she did. But she yeah. did. And Melissa, she did, and, and it was long, and it oh. was, <laughs> and it was almost a little painful, mm-hmm. but. I was just kind of laughing inside, like just thinking to myself, oh my God, Michelle's like, please go away. Please go away. Please go away. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't plan for that. Yeah. I didn't plan for that. <laughs> yeah. You did not, you were not, you did not have a, a, a planned um, response to her questions. And and that's so, normally when I blurt things out that don't make sense. Yeah. Or they could be really weird and hurtful. I don't mean them that way. I just, I have to say something to fill the void. So I'm just like, ah, ah. Oh, your dress is cut wrong. I don't know. What the, you know. I just can't. It just it doesn't come naturally to me. So I am I'm I'm socially acceptable at grooming events simply because I know there's other dog people there and I can talk to them on that level. But if I'm just out and about and somebody's wanting to hold a conversation, I'm just like, oh God, what am I gonna do? This is gonna go badly. I feel it. <laughs> I need to go home right now and take my pants off. <laughs> just discussing the fact that neither one of us likes to wear pants anymore so Mm-mm, mm-mm. we've come to a certain age and we live in a state that requires you probably shouldn't have to wear pants or clothing clothing I should agree. be optional anyway i wear clothing for you okay? yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs> it used to be that i wanted to hurry up get home take my bra off now it's like i can't stop thinking about taking my leggings off from work. every single piece of fabric on me has to be gone yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. usually I, I will i'm i'm not wearing pants now i will admit that <laughs> well, yeah you well i told you what i wear around the house i, I wear men's boxer shorts around the house it's right. so attractive it's part of my lingerie look while i'm mm-hmm. <laughs> running around the house so I think mm-hmm. that honestly, though, when we when we talk to other people, when you said talk to them like you would talk to like like you would talk to a dog, mm-hmm. usually when you usually when I talk to my dogs or I talk to customers' dogs, you're you're honest, you know, mm-hmm. you're heartfelt, yes. you're open, mm-hmm. your your energy is um, wanting a response, mm-hmm. looking for a response, even when I discipline my dogs, which I mean. I'm not the best disciplinarian, obviously. She's sound (laughs) asleep over here. She's like, why are you guys talking so loudly? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to nap. Um, But it's something that is, there's a pureness to it. Yeah. That I I think that we, like you were saying, when when we interact with other humans, there's Mm -hmm. all sorts of social rules and, and faux pas that we're worried about. And I never walk away from a conversation with my dog. Now, granted, I have got plenty of dogs to talk to and believe me my <laughs> yeah. for three days. And I, my mom keeps calling me to check in to make sure I'm okay. And I'm like, I'm fine. I, I have plenty. Of, I'm not lonely. I have conversations with them and we're good, mm-hmm. but I don't ever walk away and be like, Oh man, why did, I'm so dumb. Why did I say that to Juju? Mm-hmm. She's probably going, what the hell was she talking about? Blah, 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 blah. No, I, I, I am at my core, my truest, unique self, you know, mm-hmm. when I'm working with them. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, that's it's when, why. It's when the anxiety steps in is when yeah. you start to make those social mistakes for me anyway. Yeah, me um, too. I mean, I do it all the time. I walk away and then I go, oh, I said this or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm an oversharer. So, mm-hmm. you know. And- oh, I can guarantee to make things weird. Uh, yeah. Like it's a guarantee. If you want things to be weird, just call me over. I will, <laughs> I'll fix you up. I will fix you up. Well, but I, a good, a good rule of thumb for me but- is that if I see a stranger coming, I'm like, okay, this is just a really big dog. So if I put my mind in the mind frame of, okay, I'm getting ready to greet just a really big dog. And that's all. He might be mean. He might be nice. I don't know. But if I treat people like, like I would treat dogs and greet them like dogs, I think that I go better socially if I do that. Right. But I think it's also our truest for those of us that are dog lovers or mm-hmm. animal lovers. Mm-hmm. Although my conversations with my cats are very different. Um, yeah. I, I, I stupid, never, stupid, stupid, yeah, stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because that's usually what they're doing um, to me. Um, right. Yeah. 
I actually changed food uh, and they both jumped up on their table where I feed them. They have their own private eating area and they both jumped up this morning. I filled the bowl and they looked at it, sniffed it, both of them in unison, black and white, that are their names, Mr. Black, Mr. White. In unison, they both like did this Disney-like movie thing where they both just like turned to me and were like, what? This is unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> what is this slop? You know, like, and I was just like, they didn't have, and I'm now I'm explaining to two cats. Yes. I'm sorry, <laughs> they did not have your regular stuff. So I had to order this. And I'm like talking to these two, it's human grade. It's the same company. It's just a no. different kind. Unacceptable. And th that is that. It was the look I got. Like the two of them were just like, this is completely unacceptable. You are fired from our <laughs> One care. star. I will yes. never <laughs> stay in this hotel again. Yes. <laughs> On owner review Yelp, you would get a half a star. For this, <laughs> you know? Meanwhile, my guys are like, all my dogs are like, I forgot their vitamins. I forgot their coconut oil. I forgot mm -hmm. this and that with all the things that they get. They kind of looked at it and they were like, mm, yeah, all right, whatever. Well, okay, we'll eat it. You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> dad's got to be coming back soon. Right. <laughs> Maybe if we eat this, we'll just survive until he exactly. can come home. <laughs> <laughs> but I do really, truly believe that we can non-verbally communicate with them telepathically, I feel like uh, I, if you have that heart or soul connection with your with your pet, I do have that with some of my dogs, some of them I don't. And mm -hmm. it's like people, you know, but um, I feel like that they get you at your truest form. Yeah. You know, they get mm -hmm. you at who you really are and they love you anyway they know when you're lying because they can yeah smell it. they, they really know when you're do. Afra afraid they know when you're being sincere yep. uh, and i'm going to add and i know we're right going on on to an hour but i want to add try not to make fun of your dogs oh they, i hate that they know you're making fun of them now you can share a joke right because they do have a sense of humor yeah but when you're obviously making fun of them and saying oh don't you look stupid and blah blah your intent comes through as energy and oh, we discussed God, this yeah. before. So if you're making fun of your dog uh, or or you're teasing your dog or that stupid trick of behind the blanket and then you drop it, but you're gone, that is stressful for your dog. Yeah, they that don't is understand stressful. that. Yeah, they're just like, uh, they're just worried about you. Uh, they don't see the humor in that. They would never do that to each other. Why would you do that right. to them? So Well, and, and it, it just hurts my heart when people pick up their dog that they brought in matted and that you had to shave just for humanity over vanity. Mm -hmm. And they come back and they like are laughing and they're like, oh, you look so dumb. Or, oh, my God, he's so ugly. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. And that dog just, is like, oh, hurt. so you don't love me anymore. And that's how it feels to them. <laughs> exactly. It just it hurts my heart when you see the dog's actual reaction to it. Mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, love them. That's that's mm -hmm. what they're here for. You know, is that they they are just they're just here to radiate that. And, and just they're 100 like percent on your side, 24, 7, 365 days a year. Yeah. Uh, and and you, they deserve that back. They deserve they it back. They definitely do. And and like with human beings, some of them have trauma. Some mm -hmm. of them come broken. I have quite mm -hmm. a few rescues that came broken. And that's okay. We love them through the broken. Yep. And, and, we, we, and we stop reminding them that they had it so rough by exactly. giving them such a great life. <laughs> yep, exactly. Everybody yeah. loves the loves the rescue story. But why not love the story of, of the rescue from the broken to mm -hmm. making their life whole mm -hmm. yeah. and uh you know those clients when they're like well they're a rescue oh really when did you get them 14 years ago right three you years know? ago six <laughs> years ago or whatever yeah. i'm like by and that time they should have forgotten what happened before you right. keep reminding them right. stop reminding your dogs how broken they are and they will yeah. be whole yeah. they will be whole again because they so. will love you no matter what, really, truly, they will. Well, some of mine will. Some would lead me into traffic for a cookie, but that's yeah, another, <laughs> yeah. that's another podcast. It is. It is. <laughs> All right. We're rounding it up. Do you have any final thoughts for talking to dogs and to each other, Melissa? No, just be kind. Think Absolutely. of Think of the fact that 
your energy and the way that you emit that intent and your intention is going to be felt so much more than just the words that come out of your mouth. Absolutely. So, here, here. Use kindness. Enough said. All right. I want to say bye, Juju. Our little outro music is having some issues, so uh -oh. we're just we'll going to take, <laughs> we take out. We're going to take out. So we all love you. May your next sip be just as delicious as your last. See you soon.